Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by Gospel Beast. It's your boy CYB. And in this tutorial, we're going to show you, well, I'm going to show you how the steps on how to produce a professional commercial release or produce your own album from start to finish. And the reason I'm doing this tutorial is because I've been through the process at least five times and I'm sharing my experience for somebody else who may want to do an album, any type of music album. I've been down that road five times and I actually have five albums out on all the stre streaming platform platforms. And I'm not talking about uh, records and record stores. I'm just talking about online, dig digitally. So I have my notes and my speaker notes at the bottom where it says creating, recording, reviewing, copywriting, publishing, mixing, mastering, song tagging, album art, distribution, marketing. So those are pretty much the, the steps in a nutshell, but we're going to go into more details and we're going to break it down step by step. <clears throat> so produce your own album yourself. The steps start to finish. Let's go. Okay. So first things first, you need is the idea process, the naming process. So you need to come up with an album name. You need to come up with the album theme. Like, why are you doing this album? What's your purpose behind the album? Are you, you know, what, what inspired you to do the album? The theme behind it, that should help you come up with a name. Then you should uh, name, come up with how many tracks you're gonna have. Are you doing an EP? Are you doing an album or are you doing a single? And you want to come up with your track titles. Now this, this can change over time. As you go through the project, you will make tweaks and you may change where you may, uh, okay, you start out with 20 tracks and then you may end up using 10, which is probably the best way to do it is make a, a lot of tracks and then pick the best ones. So anyway, that's kind of the starting process that sort of get you going, your inspiration behind your project. All right, next we move into instrumentals, lyrics, and features. Okay, so songwriting. Are you writing your own song? Are you writing your own raps? That sort of thing. Or if not, are you paying somebody to write it for you? So that's something you need to consider. The same thing for the beats uh, or instrumentals or the music in the background. Are you going to make it yourself or are you going to hire somebody to make it for you? And, you know, you want to make sure your, your beats or your instrumentals are royalty free. You don't want to use someone else's track, you know, and then run into problems later down the line as far as sampling and stuff like that. So you want to make sure it's royalty free. Then you want to think about features. Do you want, you know, if you're an artist or a rapper, do you want a singer to sing, you know, doing your chorus? Do you want a, a speaker to speak doing your chorus? If you are a, a singer, you may want like a rap feature, you know, on a couple songs to kind of switch it up and make your album more dynamic. So, and also you want to, you want to focus on, or you want to, do you want to kind of go with a pay for hire, meaning you don't want to, you want to pay people up front. Okay. For this feature or for this beat, I want to pay X amount of dollars and I'm done. So later down the line, if your song takes off or your album takes off and you make, you know, a couple million dollars, you don't want people coming back to you saying, Hey, you know, you owe me money. I, I gave you that beat. So you don't want to, you kind of want to avoid, hey, I, I, if you know, I pay you, you know, based on the sales I make, because that can kind of get kind of messy. Unless you professional, you have like professional management handling that stuff. If you know you're a self, you know, you you an artist working by yourself, you don't really have a team or you don't have any help. You want to save yourself, you know, the headache and just, hey, how much for this feature? I want to own a hundred percent of the rights. How much of this? 
for this beat, I want to own 100% of the rights, pay a person up front, cut the ties, we're good. Now, later down the line, if your song do blow up and, you know, you, you may reach back out to that person and say, hey, man, you know, we, uh, I saw the song took off that you on, you know, you want to perform. Then you can sit back down at the table and kind of create a contract or, or something like that. But as far as up front, you want to just kind of cut the ties and just uh, work on which go on with your project. All right, next we want to move to recording. So this is where, you know, again, you can record at home if you know what you're doing. You know, a lot of people have studios at their house or you can record, you know, you can go to a professional studio and pay for studio time. So this is this these slides you can use kind of like a budget sheet as well. You can put your little underline, you know, beside the word and put your budget amount that you want to spend on recording, that sort of thing. But at this step, you don't want to record. Um, I'm sorry. At this step, you just recording. So once you record it, you want to do a rough mix and a rough master. And you don't want to, you really don't want to spend any, you know, a lot of money here because on, on the mix and master, because you just, because, you know, the songs may change. So you don't want to have to get it remixed and remastered again if, you have to make a change to it. So right now you just put in a rough mix. You know, if you can do it yourself, great. If not, you know, maybe you can find somebody that can do, you know, or, or find like a plug-in or with isotope uh, plug-in plugins to kind of get you a nice, decent sounding mix or master. So you can let other people review it, you know. So this is where you know, you let family, friends, even people you don't know review your 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 songs and your tracks. And the reason you want strangers is like essential because they 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 more inclined to be honest. You know, a lot of times your family, your friends, they tell they don't want to hurt your feelings or they tell you kind of you know what you want to hear, and they don't really give you you know truthful feedback. But you know, if you go to to strangers, more than likely, they will give you like direct feedback. This song's good. I didn't like this, you know, that sort of thing. So this is where you make your minor tweaks, your adjustments based on the feedback. Now, I'm not saying go and redo your whole song, your whole album. You just, you know, you, you make tweaks based on the feedback, you know, minor tweaks, that sort of thing. So then we move on. So after you get your rough rough mix, just sounding good enough for people to listen to, and it doesn't have to be perfect because if your song is that good, you know people, the the quality, you know, won't be as important if the songs, you know, is is good, you know. But anyway, then we move on to now. Once you got your feedback, you made your tweaks. Now you want to get it copyrighted, and Again, these steps is no, it don't have to be in this order, but and you may have to go back here and there, but you want to get it copyrighted here before you send it off. If you're going to send it off to a professional studio, because that, you know, when it gets in somebody else's hands, that's when it can potentially get leaked or, or, or whatever. So you want to get it copyrighted at this phase and copyright is not, you're not copywriting the quality of the track. You just copyright the actual arrangement, the lyrics and that sort of thing of the music. So you want to go ahead and get a copyright. You can get a copyright online, which I recommend, you know, versus sending a CD in and mailing it, you know, what they call a snail mail. Just do it online. I think it's like 35 bucks. They may have went up to 50 bucks. I can't remember. But once you get a copyrighted, then you, okay, you want to, you know, you can send it off online to a professional studio to get it mixed and get it mastered. Now, you have a lot of options when it comes to mixing and mastering. You can get somebody just to mix it and you can get somebody else different to master it. That's probably the best way to do it because you will have two different third parties listen to listen to your track and you will get like two additional point of views of your music. So if it's something you miss or something you you um you know if you produced it a lot of times you can't hear or you come numb to 
the track and you can't really hear from a outsider point of view. So when the mixing engineer come in, they may say, hey, man, it will sound better if you add some bells or whistles at this part of that sort of thing. And they may come in and do that. Now, you could have this, you know, one person mix and master, but that could be good, too. But, you know, best case scenario, you know, have, you know, somebody, that's all they do is mix. And do you have a master engineer? That's all they do is master. That's their job, their specialty. They focus on mastering. Then you have, you know, the mixing engineer. That's all they do is focus on mis mi mixing. So, you know, that's the best case scenario, but you can have somebody who's good at both. And then one studio may have a mixing department and a mastering depart department. So, you know, even though they may, you know, use the same gear or whatever, may have the same sound, but still, you know, that's okay too. Now, you could do it yourself if you, your skill is, you know, to that level where you can mix and master it yourself, but it's going to take a lot of time, work, and, you know, it's just something you have to decide if you want to do based on the quality. If you want to compete with, you know, other commercial tracks, you know, songs, you, you, you may want to consider getting it, you know, mastered, mixed and mastered with a professional, so to speak. But then you want to, when you send it off to get it mixed, you want to have, or you send it to the master engineer, you more than like you want 24, um, the wave format to be 24, 44 hertz, at, uh, 24 bit, 44.1. Um, and sample rate and that's kind of like the minimum i mean you can go you know higher i think 48 bit or i mean um 32 bit um but you know that's when you you know you send the mix to the master and engineer that's if you mix it yourself now let's say you just want to mix it yourself if you're good at mixing then you might send it off to get mastered or if you're good at mastering you may get it mixed by somebody and you ma master it yourself. But if you're sending it to a, mi uh, a master engineer, you want to have at least 24-bit, 44.1 sample rate. And then when, when you upload it or when you, your file is done after it's mastering, you want a 16-bit, 44.1 sample rate. And that's if you're using just a, your standard you know, release to like your online distribution channels. Now, streaming, streaming services like which uh, like Apple Music or what they call it, um, Apple Digital Masters or Master for iTunes. Now, that's different. Now, you may want to consider when you master in, when you get it mastered by somebody else, you may consider get it mastered specifically for iTunes. And I believe I'm not sure you have to do research on that, but I think there's a higher bit rate and they, they actually, and when you master it for iTunes, it sound better on iTunes. So um, that's a, that's a different way of doing it. So you can, you know, send it to a master engineer that has it, you know, you had to pay additional fee to get it mastered for iTunes, but you had to release it to, other distribution, digital distribution um, companies, you know, with the 1644 and then for Apple, um, App, iTunes, I think is, I think it's like 96, uh, I could be wrong, like 96 uh, bit, um, something like that, 48 uh, sample rate. But anyway, it's, it's a higher sample rate, higher bit rate. But anyway, let's move on. All right, now tagging your tracks now and, and your artwork. So we're going to talk about tagging your tracks. Now, sometimes in a lot of cases, the mastering engineer would do this for you. But if they don't, uh, they have free websites that you can go to get your song tagged. Now, basically, uh, as you can see in a little diagram here, screenshot, you want, you know, the name of the track, description, the year, genre, that sort of thing. So it's just like metadata for for that for that song. So if you get played on the radio, somebody know who you are, who's the artist name, what song that is. It can be tracked. You know, it's like an ID for that song. So so um, they can identify 
what the who the song is by, you know, that sort of thing. So if you see the other image to the right, uh, that's how your album art will look. So instead of looking like an audio file or just like a a music symbol, it will have a picture of your artwork. Now, if you have multiple songs, you know, on a, on the same album, what I did as you look, um, each I used the same album cover, but I just changed the name for each track. So you can use the same album cover or album art for each track, or you can you can do like I did and I just changed the name for each for each uh each song. And you can manually do it on your computer or you can go online, like I said, they got free websites where you can do it. Now we're gonna move on to album artwork. Now this is essential because a lot of people may take a shortcut here and I highly recommend you really spend some some time energy on your album artwork because this is what people see all the mil on the millions out of the millions of songs and albums that's you know on iTunes Spotify if they come across your album it, something has to jump out to them to say oh what's that I'm gonna click on that and listen now if you already a, a known artist yeah it may not be a big deal but if you unknown you're trying to you know, you want people to listen. One way to do it is to have a catchy album artwork. So I highly recommend if you're not a graphic designer, hire one and get somebody who's good at graphic design and have them do your album artwork. You want at least 1600 by 1600 size image for your artwork. And you want at least 300 DB uh, as far as in, you know, Photoshop, you know, so you want that size minimum, you can go higher. Moving on, moving on, moving on. All right, so now we get into publishing and release distribution. So you can, how I do it, you can go to one place, one shop stop, and have them uh, distributed to all these different channels. And you can manually go to each different channel and upload your music. It's going to take a lot longer. You know, it's going to be a lot more work. And, you know, this, and it's going to be a lot. Uh, I mean, I think, it, I, don't, I don't even know if it costs, but uh, if you go through either one of these three, uh, TuneCore, CD Baby, Lander, uh, they'll do it for you. They'll, they'll just shoot it off for a fee to all of them for you, you know, and publishing so you want to make sure you get um you sign up for your publishing as far as you register through bmi ascap and it's, it's a couple of more but cd baby uh, i'm not sure about lander or tunecore i only work with cd baby when i upload my music and they have a pro version where they do the publishing for you now the downside is they take 15 percent commission of your publishing for doing it for you, which you can do it yourself for free, but you know, for the convenience, you know, you can use CD baby pro pay a little extra money and you have your publishing taken care of on that point of view standpoint. So another difference, and this is as far as my understanding and last time I checked, I could be wrong, but CD baby is a one-time fee you pay, see the baby a one-time fee and they distribute distribute your music to all these streaming sites the other ones i think is a yearly fee so you have to pay every year uh, a small amount so that's why you see the baby because it's a one-time fee all right and and after that your music is live and now only thing left is marketing now this is not part of the process this is more of an optional at the same time like i said if you're not known you're not a big name this is something you probably want to consider you know videos you know music videos you know speaking podcasts blogs all that stuff content built around your album so you make your album you know uh, you kind of build up hype around your album, like talking about why you did the album, you know, um, that sort of thing. You know, social media, you know, um, that's everybody knows about social media, posting about your, you know, your album, your music. You can even pay for ads, 
you know, you can actually um, pay a, a company to market for you. And, you know, it's a lot of them out there and it's worth it. You spend money on mixing, you spend money on mastering, you spend money on recording, you know, you spend money on your artwork. But a lot of people don't spend money on marketing. And the marketing part is the one that's going to potentially can bring you a return on investment can bring you some funds back in the house. So, you know, I would invest in marketing. And from my experience, like I said, I did this five times. I have five albums. A lot of them I didn't do marketing and I didn't make, you know, I didn't really make any money in return on my investment. I just did it out of passion. But, you know, and then you want a website, you know, and on, over top of your social media and your website, um, you can use uh, Banzoogle. And that's what I use. And that's for artists and musicians. And I actually have a tutorial on that if you want to check it out. But that's about about it. But one other thing I want to touch on real quick about your videos. If you do a video, please be creative. Because everybody does a video where they kind of rapping or singing in the camera. Do something that's going to catch people's eye. You know, if they don't even, they may not even like the song, but it's something about that video that was pretty cool that will make them like, watch the video or listen to the music or share it like man look at this what this guy doing in this video uh it was like an old school video uh i think it was by a group called far side and the whole video the artist was upside down rapping upside down everybody else was and you couldn't see their whole body you saw like I think their chest down and it was and everybody else was upright and it was upside down and it was like that was just so cool so even if you didn't like the song a lot of people just liked the video so they shared and watched the video so that's just a, a, a just a quick example of that and got any questions comments if it's something I left out let me know in the comments hit me up you know I just want to say thanks for watching. Until next time, it's your boy CYB brought to you by Gospel Beast. I see you when I see you. I'm out.